In this video, I'm going to do a comparison of Faraday's law of induction and Ampere's circular law with Maxwell's modification. So these guys are usually known as Faraday's law and Ampere's law. So Faraday and Ampere, we know are these great historical physicists, and they were uh, at the forefront of these discoveries and actually writing the, these observations down as laws. And then Maxwell took all of these together and he wrote down his four famous equations, Maxwell's equations. And they are some of the fundamental equations of electromagnetism. So let's have a look at this left-hand side over here first. This is Faraday's law of induction. And on the right-hand side, we have Ampere's circuital law. And Ampere's circuital law also has Maxwell's modification. And that's for the displacement current. So this is a little modification that Maxwell made in addition to Ampere's law to account for another way that circulating magnetic fields could be produced and that is with that displacement current, or the changing electric field. So let's have a look at first the differential forms, which are listed here, or, or stated here at the top, and then the integral forms at the bottom. So over here, we can see that there is a curl operator. We've got the curl of the electric field. And over here, we can see we have the curl of the magnetic field. In both of these expressions, there is a partial derivative with respect to time. So a circulating, or the curl of an electric field, can be generated by a changing magnetic field. And the curl of a magnetic field can be generated by a changing electric field. An important difference to note is that this sign here is positive, and this sign here is negative. This negative sign is usually summarized as a qualitative statement, and sometimes it's called Lenz's law. And that says that uh, the circulation of an electric field is actually going to oppose the change in the magnetic field. So it's going to oppose that change. And it's going to produce circulation that counters that change in the magnetic field. Whereas with electric fields, uh, changing electric fields, they don't have that negative sign over here. So the circulation of a magnetic field uh, does not have a minus sign. So it's going to be in the same direction as that change. So this, this is an important observation to make. Another important observation is that there is no uh, equivalent term to, for this current in the electric field case. So this is unique to magnetism. So for magnetism, you can actually generate some kind of rotation or some kind of circulation from two different methods. You can either have currents or you can have changing electric fields. For electric fields, so not for magnetism, for electric fields, you can only generate circulation from a changing magnetic field. So there's no equivalent for this J vector. And this J vector is actually the current density. Now, let's have a look at the integral forms. And then we'll have a look at some more intuitive explanations. So the integral forms both have a line integral around a closed curve C. And this closed curve C is actually the boundary of a surface called S. So S can, can be like a membrane bound by a curve C. So we'll, we'll have a look at some drawings to actually let that idea sink in. But first, let's talk about these integral representations. So the line integral around the closed curve C of the electric field is actually going to be equal to the negative time derivative of this surface integral across that surface. So this surface integral is actually the flux through the surface S. So the flux of the magnetic field, if that flux is changing with respect to time, we're going to take the negative of that, and that's going to give us the circulation around the curve that acts as the boundary for the surface which the flux is going through. Then, if we look at the magnetic field analog in Ampere's law, we're going to see that the circulation around a closed curve C for the magnetic field is actually due to two different things, as we saw in this differential form. First of all, it's due to this guy over here. And this guy is actually the current. So you can think of this as the current I. This is exactly the same as the current. So the surface integral of all of those current density vectors over the surface S, that is the current. Then, what is this guy over here? Well, in the same way that you had magnetic flux over here, now we have electric flux. So this is electric flux through that surface S. And we're looking at the time derivative of that electric flux. And the time derivative of the electric flux, that can actually produce a uh, circulation around the curve C. So we've seen the integral forms. And we've seen the differential forms of both Faraday's law of induction and Ampere's circuital law with Maxwell's modification. 
So now let's have a look at some diagrams that can help us actually explain this. So if I draw a little diagram that represents a closed curve C, so let's, let's do that for Faraday's law. So this is a closed curve C, and the side away from us is going that way, and the side closer to us is going uh, this way. So this is an arrow to say that this is the side that's close to us, and it's going this way, and it's actually rotating around here. So that's the direction of that circulation. What could that circulation be due to? Well, it has to be due to the change in the magnetic flux. So if you imagine that there's some kind of surface up here, so this is some kind of surface S, so this surface is S, and this curve, that is the boundary of the surface, is C. Right, so there has to be some kind of flux either going through, so we'll draw some, some little flux line, so there can be flux going either way, but there has to be a change in that flux, and the change in that flux with a minus sign is this circulation. So that's what it would look like visually. Imagine some kind of closed curve, C, and that acts as a boundary for some kind of surface, and then take the surface integral across that surface, and that's actually going to give you the flux through the surface. And the change in that flux, that's going to give you the circulation of the electric field. Let's do the same thing now, but for the magnetic field. If we do the same thing for the magnetic field, if we take some kind of closed curve C, so this is C, and we'll, we'll take the same direction for our curve. So another point that I want to make is uh, the sign tells you which direction it's going to go. So if, if we choose this to be the positive direction, and if it flows the other way, then it's going to have a negative circulation, right? It's the same way that if we choose flux upwards to be positive, if there's more flux going down, then the flux is going to be negative. So these are sign conventions, and conventions are usually chosen, so the most convenient convention is the positive one, and the most convenient one is negative. So here is our boundary curve C. So we'll write this is C. Then I can put some random surface, S. That's going to be S. So keep in mind, this is some kind of uh, membrane that's sitting above. So you know what I'll add? I'll add in some little dotted lines to show you that uh, it's actually a surface like this. There we go. So these are dotted lines to show you that this is some kind of surface that's flopping around and it's bounded by C. So that, you can actually pick any surface that's bounded by C. You can, you can uh, pick the flat one. If it's a circular curve, you can just pick a circle. You could also pick a cylinder. Whatever is easiest and whatever simplifies the calculations, that's the one we want to pick. So we have the closed curve C and we have S. What could possibly be going through that surface? Well, we could have some J. We could have, I'll, I'll draw that on this side, we could have some current going through here. And the current is described by the J vector. And if you add up all of the J vectors throughout the surface, you will get the current. So this surface integral is actually equivalent to the current. Then what we could also have is a changing electric flux. We could have some flux going through here. So we'll draw some, imagine we have some kind of electric field lines coming in and out. So we'll draw another one up here. So these are some electric field lines they are going through. And just imagine that they're changing with respect to time. So there's some kind of time evolution of this flux. So both of these things can cause circulation of a magnetic field. And I want you to notice that both electric fields and magnetic fields do share some very fundamental characteristics. So there is some kind of loose symmetry between electric fields and magnetic fields. But it's not a perfect symmetry. It's not a perfect symmetry. Why? Because these guys don't share the exact same terms. There's some sign differences. And there's terms that appear in one that doesn't appear in the other. This is just like Gauss's law for electric fields and Gauss's law for magnetism. There are some differences, like magnetic fields, they don't have the equivalent of charge. And there are other differences as well. So what we have to be aware of is the similarities and the differences so that we can apply these laws and have an intuitive understanding as to what they're actually saying. So try and draw these pictures yourself. Try and draw these uh, surface integrals uh, and try and compute some surface integrals for actual examples. And so that's, that was a, a brief summary of Faraday's law and Ampere's law and the comparison between these two fundamental laws of electromagnetism.